So this is the thing about meditation is we as human beings, some of us figure out how to attain one pointedness of the mind that a lot of human beings will figure out. Mm -hmm. Right. And the key thing to understand about meditation is that it's a state, I mean, not meditation, but mm. what we're going for is a state of consciousness. And there right. are many ways to attain that state of consciousness. So uh, tantric sex is one, meditation is another, flow state, pickleball, runner's high, video games. working out, sometimes video games. So when I work with esports professionals, I try to teach them how to enter the flow state and become one with the game. Mm. And they know what I'm talking about. And that's when you see these players who enter the state where they are literally like seeing the future. And it's like, they know exactly what's gonna happen on the map. They know exactly where these people are gonna be. And if you're on, on the opposite team, when someone is like the God of the video game, it feels like you're playing against someone who's superhuman because they are, they've transcended mm. like basic human functioning. So is that your biggest takeaway of going to India was, was simply the point of focus leading to happiness? That's a very core fundamental. It may be the biggest takeaway. Um, I'd have to think about that a little bit. But I would say the first thing that I learned that I really fell in love with is like, this was a course in myself. So we formally study mathematics. We formally study, you know, all kinds of stuff, like even psychology. But people who study psychology don't become better human beings. Like you can take a course on addiction, right? Mm -hmm. You can even get a PhD in addiction. It does, it literally does not, it's not the same as addiction treatment. So learning something subjectively and learning something like informationally are like two different things. And so the coolest thing about India is this was a course in myself. Where do my desires come from? How can I conquer desire? Like literally, how can you control any part of your mind? How can you, con can you control desire? Where does happiness come from? Where do my desires come from? Like where do my thoughts come from? Why can't I wake up? On some days I can wake up at 8 a.m and go to Spanish class, on other days I can't. What's the difference? And this is what I found so frustrating is no one could give me that answer. And I even looked at science, right? And science will say like circadian rhythm, but how do you fix that? Like we don't have a course in the self. Like literally how does your digestion work? What determines whether you're constipated or not constipated? We don't teach people these things. And so what I loved in India is suddenly I was, I, I was in a class that taught me about all of the things that were fucking my life which is me. I, yeah. I want to bring up uh, something that I've been thinking about a lot <clears throat> lately, which is the fact that we have a lot of different ideologues and experts that try to force their framework on certain people, such as like you have the Andrew Tates, you have other personal development gurus and stuff like that. And they're all saying like different things, but they're all promising that these things will make you happier and fix you. Right. And so you're taking these data points. You want to apply it because they are coming from a place of authority. Right. But then every single time I listen to this, I feel like this data suggests, nope, this is wrong. You should go with this. And then the only other thing that I have to fall back on that actually is of, of, of substance would be my own personal experience rather than like looking at what the data suggests. And it was more effective when I, when I look at my own personal experience. And, and that's what you're saying you kind of experienced in this monk culture in India. All these people have different answers. Mm -hmm. And let's say that for the sake of fairness or charity or whatever, that there's a varying level of evidence for each person. Correct. Right? but everyone has some kind of evidence. So I think the reason that you have a thousand different answers is a really great principle from medicine, which is that anytime you have a thousand treatments for something, none of them work. Think about that for sure. a second. Why would that be? When we Probably each one is tailored to yeah, a specific very... person. Nope, it just doesn't work. So let's think about like, do we have like a treatment? Like if you get pneumonia today, how many, how many what are the treatment options? Pneumonia? Yeah. I, whatever medicine they have. That antibiotics, sure. right? Y'all take antibiotics. It's not like, like there's a thousand things for sleep, right? There's like all kinds of sleep aids and someone's like use this app and do this meditation mm -hmm. and like eat this diet, have chamomile tea. You can take medication, right? It's because there's a variability of response. But just from evolutionary standpoint, us humans figured out like, oh, like before you have surgery, what they do is they take some betadine and they swab it all over the world. Anywhere you have surgery, take betadine or some kind of alcohol, they swab some part of your skin. Anytime you go to the doctor's office, get a little alcohol pad before you get an mm -hmm. injection. When something works, all of humanity adopts it. Stuff like clothing and cooking food, right? So any, anytime something really works, it is universally adopted. And what's going on with, I think all these people have different ideas. I, I don't know, uh, sorry if I'm cutting you off here, but 
is I think that they're saying, okay, this is what maybe worked for me or this is what the science says. And they're saying it'll work for you. And they're also doing population-based medicine, right? They're saying it'll work for everybody. Like they're talking to the internet. They're not talking to a sample size of one. They're saying, if you want to be rich and successful and famous or whatever, get laid, um, then this is the path. But that's like fundamentally different from how I think w things work is that I may, so I've like studied to become a monk, trained and taught at Harvard Medical School. I'm a clinician. I've done neuroscience research. If you ask me, will this work for you? My answer would be, I don't know. I have no idea. Has it worked for a hundred people I've worked with before you? Absolutely. But one thing you learn when you start practicing clinical medicine is just because it works for a hundred people does not mean it works for the hundred and first like a hundred percent and medicine is going to teach you that the hard way because you think it's going to work. And that's when you do, that's when you hurt a patient. That's when you fail a patient because you assumed you knew what was going to work. And so you're like, yeah, this is going to work yeah. done. And that's when, when something doesn't work because human beings are individual, right? Like we're all unique. We all have a unique set of genetics, life experiences, right? Mental faculties, even th there's uniqueness within you that varies from day to day. Your caffeine level will affect your state of consciousness, will affect the level of anger that you feel. Your caffeine dependence from month to month will alter all of those things.